Uh, Jerry Pinto is from Mumbai, um, originally from Goa. He is an acclaimed writer of poetry and prose and fiction. His works include Surviving Women, Bombay, Mary John, Writings on Mumbai, Asylum and Other Poems, Amid the Big Hoon, Baluta, and Helen, The Life and Times of an H Bomb. The last of which won the National Film Award in 2007, and the second to last, Amid the Big Hoon, for which he won the Hindu Literary Prize and the Crossroads Award in 2012 and 2013. The About the Author sections of his his novels of his books point to a very an eclectic backstory as a math teacher and a librarian, a child rights advocate, and so much more. Um, so, uh, and, and, and many other books that you have in fact seen. And, and Jerry was here in Cody the past few days as our guest, um, our guest writer, and instructor and teacher at our writing workshop. Um, and, and Jerry, can you talk a little bit about how that went? Did you enjoy the, uh, did you enjoy the workshop? At the beginning of every workshop is that one moment when you think someone is going to wise up and they're going to walk in here and frog march me out because they're going to say, what do you know about writing? And they're going to try and teach it. Then I console myself with the fact that when you conduct a workshop, you're actually in the process of being taught by the students you are with. It becomes, if you can try and get rid of um, what I think plagues the Indian education system, which is that students feel that you know, you're some kind of uh, fount of knowledge and they are receptacles into which you will pour this and they will go out and their lives will be dramatically changed. If you can change this by generally clowning and fooling around and kind of, you know, showing your underbelly, telling them that you're as vulnerable as they are, that you're starting somewhere and you may have had a little time on them, you know, 48 years old, the average class student was in their 20s. So I have got like about 25 years of reading and writing that they haven't got. And that when they get to this age, it can probably be if they decide to dedicate their lives to writing. I mean, uh, uh, they do it. The problem with having XY chromosomes is that almost inevitably you stumble into pomposity. You become pompous you know, at some point. Right? So I just said, dedicating my life to writing as I have. And I have dedicated my life to writing. I've kind of like played around with words and I've slapped them about, you know, they've slapped me about, they've come back on me, things I've written, things I've said. I've had a grand time with words, okay? So, if they want to have a grand time with words, when they're 48, they'll all be, you know, roughly where I am. It'll all be okay. But at this point in time, you know, when you're actually in a workshop situation, you come out having, feeling um, oddly exhausted, which is because you're paying careful attention all the time. You're trying to listen, you're trying to look beyond the postures and the, you know, the kind of things that young people have to put on as camouflage. Because they, you know, that's what young people, they're vulnerable and they're sensitive and they're hurting and they're carrying all kinds of stuff around. You don't get overexcited, huh? All of you who are talking about it. Okay, but I, try, I sort of remember what it was like. So often the poses of being terribly, you know, just feel like slapping them, but uh, you try to understand that, you try to get past it, you try to see what is being said rather than what everything, what the words are. And once you're doing that, you're exhilarated by the fact that you discover human beings in their words, in what they're saying. And that's always right. Like, and to a writer, that's the deal. That's just sometimes the shape of a face, the turn of the head, the posture of the body, all these begin to start stories off, and that is kind of like it's in value.